What's up everyone, Zach here, and welcome to Taste Talk, where I'll be bringing you tournament reports, uh, major tournament results, what we're testing for upcoming events, a buy list, set reviews, and really whatever else comes to mind at any given point. Um, <laughs> it's going to be like a weekly series. Don't know how long it's going to be, probably going to try to keep it under 20 minutes. I don't know, it'll be quick. But today we're going to be going over the top 8 of Costa Mesa re regionals that just finished up tonight. Uh, gonna go over a couple deck lists that we've seen already from top eight and then gonna be going over my Zork counters tournament report that I played the other day and uh, the deck list for that and how that panned out so let's get right on into it I uh, will start right off by getting on into the top eight of Costa Mesa regionals um, happened this last weekend in uh, California expanded black white through ultra prism so um, here's the top eight uh, players and their decks that they played uh, starting first seed, Alex Hill playing Glacian, Glacian Barbarical. So that was one of the big surprises to come out of the tournament. So I get pretty major success from the six prizes guys. Um, the point of the deck is just to shut down Zorork, basically. A lot of the Zororks weren't running many field blowers or no stadiums. And they would be playing Hex to get around Barbarical, which I should probably go over. Barbarical does... His ability is if you have a stadium in play, then your opponent can't play special energy. So, kind of can just shut down some Zorak decks, especially if they're not prepared to handle it. And then Glaceon's ability shuts down all EX and GX abilities, so they can't trade to be drawn cards to try to get out of it. They can't really string hexes so much, so the deck just kind of preys on all the Zorak decks. And I actually have Alexil's list right here. Um... Pretty straightforward. It plays four E hammer, so if they do get the special energies out, you can just get them, knock them off right away. And yep, congrats to him taking down first seed. Um, and that was like first seed in back to back regionals, which is huge. And then second seed was uh, Kiana Ma Mini. I'm gonna butcher all the names. I can't enunciate anything today, but I'm <laughs> playing the Zorak eggs, the four executes the propagation so you can like hex shelf your opponent pseudo and then play four executes down uh pretty solid deck obviously it had uh, two placings in the top eight with um finnegan lynch playing it also and then third place was azul take uh playing drampa garb so i'm not sure his list but probably pretty close to igor's and then Igor with 4th seed playing Drampagarb also. He ended up winning the tournament, which we have his list over here. Um, really straightforward. It's playing the three choice bands and a muscle band just in case. I think for frogs, basically, is the biggest one. You can hit 170 on a Greninja break, which is pretty big. And then it's just playing two Drampa, the three Lele, and Oricorio hiding under that trophy. Um, <laughs> he made a pretty sweet play where he ended up damaging... Uh, Zorak GX and then taking three prizes with the uh, finishing up the Zorak and the egg. So pretty big, pretty straightforward. He was playing a dowsing machine instead of computer search. It just kind of gets back your parallel cities, which can be huge against Zorak. It's playing three, so you're really trying to sh shut down Zorak decks. You can get Garblock and Parallel City and Righteous Edge, and they just can't draw out of it most games. So it's only playing one Rainbow Energy, so it's just kind of trying to power up Berserk naturally, like, with your opponent poking damage at it or something, but really the Trash Lanch is just so strong in any format that you're playing a bunch of items, which is usually just any Pokemon to game, so. <laughs> um, so, and then fifth place, Caleb Gedemeyer with uh, Zork Lycanroc. I think he was first seed going into day two, so just strong deck obviously and then we got uh in six seed finnegan lynch who ended up taking second place playing zork eggs again the same uh same style of deck you basically propagate all your eggs play hex and then you can play them down and one shot anything and then seventh seed we have eli adovino which i probably mispronounced that too but playing the good old toad garb so that was kind of cool seeing that back in fashion it just really shuts down Zorak decks a lot of the time. Um, it has a lot more disruption potential than something like Toad Zorak. So it was playing the Laser Bank and all that, you know, typical Toad shenanigans. And then 8th seed, Joe Rudiger with Zorak Lycanroc also, and he's just been on a tear lately, recently too. Um, pretty sure he top-aided 
uh, St. Louis, and then he also did well over in Europe. What was that second place in Europe? So or Oceania, uh, intercon, yeah, intercontinentals or whatever you want to call them. But yeah, that was the top eight. Pretty uh, solid. A lot of what we expected going in with expanded being Zork dominant, and the Dramp Garb did really well at the last expanded event too in Dallas. But it couldn't get past top eight, I don't think. Um, and then that Glaceon Babarical deck just being so disruptive against anything Zork is huge. Um, and that's about it. Maybe next week we'll cover the top 32 meta breakdown and all that. So we'll see. Next, I'll be bringing you my tournament report from the A to Z League Cup in Garden City. Uh, I decided to play Zork counters, which there is the list I used. Um, I'll go over what changes I'll make later, but there was a few cards I I thought were going to be good and kind of ended up disagreeing with. Um, let's get out of that. Um, <laughs> so, round one, played against Zork Weavile, and that was a tough matchup. We went ahead really early on and was just preying on the Sneasels and went ahead with like taking out like Azura and like three Sneasel, or two Sneasels, but that ended up making all my counter attackers just not do anything so he ended up getting some weavals out and just slapping me i think at one point i played a lele to get a guzma to knock out a sneasel and that i could have just kept three abilities on the bench and i would have been fine but uh so went started off 0-1 and then second round played against garchomp and he drew like fire turn two he got a candy garchomp and knocked out my into the breakpoint guard champ, and then his turn three he got a knockout with like he had two Lucarius out and knocked out my Zorg GX with his breakpoint guard champ and it was just really unfortunate but he played it well, drew like a god and ended up beating me and then so I was down to O two and I was like, Oh this deck it just ah because, you know, didn't draw very well and then the first game I was just trying to get a handle of it still. Um, round three, played against Zoropod, and it was a super close game, and I ended up sneaking it out with, a. I I think I did a watch and learn play that ended up winning me the game, but it was really close. It's, in that matchup, it's pretty 50-50. They have a lot more healing than you do, but you have a lot more return potential in one hit than they do, so it's, if you get a couple flying flips off, it can be really favored, like if... You hit two flying flips off, then you get the choice band Kakui onto a Zork that they're not expecting. So it's really not that uh, not that bad of a match as long as you play it right. Usually you're going to be taking out a Lele, a Zork, and like something else, maybe another Zork. But not that hard with Sudowoodo as long as you carefully maneuver around your counter energies. And then round four, I played against Bulu, and I think I used Mimikyu all three attacks to take my six prizes. It was, uh, also I had to play around. It was at a, there was one point where he, he knocked out one of my prizes, or one prize attackers to go down to one prize, which set up my Mimikyu into a Lysander. I think I traded into Rescue Stretcher, Counter Energy, and then had the Guzma in hand to take out a Lele for game. So really close game there again which this deck just always has close games like when you're trying to do that thin line of trying to counter energies it's you really have to play it right or you just lose sometimes um run five ho -Oh, uh the ho -Oh, wabafe dust uh dawn wings and that is such a favorable matchup for our deck uh counter energies they n knock out anything and you can just respond with uh, watch and learn or Mimikyu's attack uh, copycat I think and if you get you know they don't knock you out right away you can just fly and flip them for a hundred and if Dawn Wings ever hits the field there's your easy two prizes so and flying flipping for a hundred sets up their Lele knockouts for a Guzma later on so pretty straightforward match there uh, ended up winning that one and then some three and two we knew a couple four twos were going to sneak in and there was a potential where two people who had a tie already could lose and like four four twos could sneak in so round six played against buzzwell lycanroc and we're playing the mew which isn't the only thing that helps match up but when they're not expecting it especially when like i went first bridgeted then he guzma's azura 
to knock it out. And then I have uh, Zork in hand, Lele for Malo to grab double colorless Mew, play it down, knock out the Buzzwill, and then all of a sudden they don't have anything else set up because they went out of the way to kill the Zura right away. Uh, those, I think the matchup's super favorable, especially with your Shaman, the Shining Legends, with uh, Rally back. It can one-hit the Lycanrocs when they try to step up and take a couple knockouts, so really a favorable matchup. So, end of the day, 4-2. Awesome. It was, you know, felt good about the deck after the first two rounds. <laughs> Started off really rough, but I think I'm going to continue playing this. Uh, we, oh, and I ended up finishing 11th, I think, so uh, my brother, who played the same 60, got top 8 and then got eliminated by... Bodon, who ended up winning the tournament, so shout out to him, playing a Buzzwell like in Rock, so, and I know I just said it was a favorable matchup, but I guess he just didn't draw well at all against him, so, uh, Buzzwell can just prey on anything that draws poorly at all, so, with this list, I would, I put the Rangaroo in, because I thought there might be, like, one or two mil there, it was, like, a 40-something person cup, and, Orangaroo, that's the new one, resource management, to put three cards back into your deck. And it's such, like, it just auto-wins you the mill, and a lot of times I found it, like, I put it in and, like, put, like, two puzzles and something else back in. But usually in most matchups against anything else to work, you just never have that time to. So I think we're going to cut that. And then we're also going to cut the fighting energy. It... The idea behind that is against other Zork decks, you can put it down, put a counter energy onto the Sudowoodo, and they think it's not a threat until you attach the fighting energy. So I guess that fighting energy could also be a rainbow. Didn't think about that. But <laughs> it would make it so you could do a couple, you know, cute little shenanigans, but besides that, I think it's not worth it. Most of the times you can just play around without it, so I'd probably cut that. And I think, what did we put back in? We put an extra Cynthia in, because we actually cut down to five draw supporters, which is pretty sketch, especially against anything garb. And what else did we put? I don't remember the other card we put in. Oh, E-Hammer. We took E-Hammer out last second, which was a stupid decision. E-Hammer is just so good, especially when you, you can reuse them with the puzzles and, you know, being able to just hit E-Hammers can win games sometimes. So, yeah, that was pretty... Uh, cut and dry tournament it ended 4-2 so 4-2 always feels like okay you uh especially most of these cups you need to go like x11 like 4-1-1 5-1-1 so you know you only can afford to lose one round so it's pretty tough but we'll have a couple uh league cups next weekend got a gamers gauntlet so should be a good tournament usually i made top eight at that if the last few times so i'm jinxing myself now so i'm not gonna get it <laughs> Uh, and then, so our next major tournament coming up is Charlotte Regionals in two weeks, so really excited for that. It's going to be the same format that St. Louis was in, and I'm pretty sure I'm not going to play Bulu. It <laughs> just, it didn't draw well for me the, in day two, and I think a lot of the decks kind of have countermeasures to it now, like the counter energies and the Zoropod can just win those games, and just not setting up scares me, so... Right now we're testing a lot of the Zork counters, so I think that's a really solid li list that we have going there. Um, I mean, it's just a couple cards off of the 16th place list. Uh, I think it was Zach Bakari was the one that played it. So, and I think with the changes we made back to it, it's like almost similar to that. Um, so, Zork counters. Uh, we were trying to play that Zork Weavile, the one that was the European winning list, but we ended up cutting it down like it was playing a, like a 3gx one or two stand in two break with a 2-2 weave outline and i just found it clunking up so much maybe it, i was misplaying but i would even clunk and then end up winning somehow but it, it really is a heavy setup deck because you want to be getting those dork breaks out so i kind of retooled it to make it more of a gx focus with the backup of the weave aisle. and it was running well but i still don't think it's as much of a threat as the counter decks can be, especially when the no one's or someone's not playing around the counter decks. It can just prey on the people that aren't expecting it. And then we're really trying to get Zork Sogaleo to work, but it just doesn't set up a lot. Um, our list probably was off, but we'll be 
retooling it. There was, like, uh, Michael Catrone posted a list that he won a cup with the other day, and I think the list was obviously way better than ours, so maybe we'll give a shot at that, but we're going to have a bu bunch of gameplay videos up this week. There's going to be a whole bunch of Zork counters. Uh, we tried out Raichu, but I don't know. It's going to be... I'm hoping the meta's a lot of the same as it was for St. Louis. I think the Zoropod's going to be a lot more played. It had a pretty heavy percentage of people who played it that made day two. So hopefully, well, I say hopefully, but uh, Duskmane, Necrozma, Magnezone was one of the most played decks in St. Louis. And hopefully that stays the same because those are usually easier wins. But <laughs> I don't think people are going to be playing it in mass as much as it was. And then... Buzzwell like and Rock is still gonna be one of the more played decks, so just be on the lookout for those decks. And that's about it for today. Uh let me know what you guys think about this. Um I'm doing this mostly for me, just to, you know, try to get my thoughts out there. Gonna be doing the tournament reports are easier to do it if I don't wanna make a dedicated video of me getting twelfth place at a forty eight person league cup, like <laughs> so it helps me run through that. And yeah. Any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. Uh just be sure to leave a like, helps me out. Subscriber, subscribe, that'd be awesome. Almost hit 2,000, so gonna be making a push for that soon. And yep, that's about it. Later, everyone.